What's going on YouTube? It's Mike here. Today guys in this video, I'm going to be giving you my top iOS 8 Cydia tweaks of 2015. So yes guys, in this video today, I'm going to be giving you my top iOS 8 tweaks of 2015. And as you guys know, pretty much on a yearly basis, I do these videos. I'm a pretty avid jailbreaker, um, and I always love to gather the best, the latest and greatest jailbreak tweaks, combine them uh, into one video for you guys. And I'm going to be showing you uh, some of the best tweaks and must-haves that you need on your iOS 8 device. This is my iPhone 6 Plus, um, which is jailbroken, uh, of course, with the Pangu uh, jailbreak. If you remember, several months back, I gave a tutorial how to do that and so I've been using a lot of tweaks since and so today in this video you're gonna get to check them out so the first one is Eternum I actually don't have to open anything to show that to you guys um, as you can see here on my home screen all my icons are weirdly arranged it's actually very um, similar to the Apple Watch UI and as a matter of fact that's exactly uh, what this style Eternum is in the style of um, the Apple Watch UI and I will tell you it's very smooth I love how it scrolls how it feels how it looks um, overall it looks really good basically they're these circle icons just like on the Apple watch and as you move the screen around um, icons zoom out in the background and get smaller and the ones that you're focusing on the middle kind of get bigger and it's actually pretty cool you can also um, zoom in closer on icons or you can zoom uh, all the way out so you could see an entire collection of your icons there you go so you can see all of them uh, floating in the sky right there and I could just zoom back in and just give one tap to the home button and there I am um, back to the center What's really cool is there's a spotlight search in the middle, um, which gets you right to your spotlight search so you don't have to worry about swiping up or anything. And so you could pretty much just scatter around there and apps open up perfectly. This is a working tweak. Apps open up perfectly fine. Haven't noticed any issues with apps opening so far. Overall, it's a pretty cool tweak. And I think it was like $299 or $199 in Cydia. Uh, definitely worth the price. I really like it a lot. And if you're looking forward to the Apple Watch like I am, this will get you just a little more excited for it um, since it does pretty much fully replicate the UI. And for those 6 plus users who are wondering, um, the landscape mode actually does work very well. You can see the status bar is kind of off. There's a little extra room here for where the dock should be um, on the right. But for the most part, I mean, it works perfectly fine. And I'm assuming that you can, yep, you can do this in just about any orientation, even upside down, either side, or just facing normally straight up forward. All right, so this next tweak that I want to go over is called Lock Lift. Now, this has to be one of my favorite top uh, tweaks for iOS 8. So I'm going to go ahead and actually lock my device. Now, this tweak actually takes place on the lock screen, which is pretty cool. I'm just going to bring my device up. And as you can see right here on the bottom, there's a little fingerprint identification, uh, much like you'd see with Apple Pay. Now, basically what this tweak does is it takes that same little fingerprint uh, identification, even though you can't actually put your finger on the screen, but it's just there uh, when it reads it. Um, this actually completely mimics Apple Pay. And as a matter of fact, when I unlock it, it makes the same sound as when you're making a payment with Apple Pay. Now this works on any iDevice, it's not just the iPhone 6 or iPhone 6 Plus, and it doesn't make any payments in that process. Basically all it does um, is it makes that cool little tick and animation and the actual Apple Pay sound when you unlock your device and you have the animated um, fingerprint scanner right above the home button. As a matter of fact, right in line, uh, same size with the Touch ID sensor as well. And I'll show you that there again, I'll just put my finger on it. You can see it fills in the finger as it reads it, and then it checks, and it lets you know um, that it's scanned, and it unlocks your device. It's actually really cool, and if I hop into settings here, and I go down to lock lift, I could change up the settings. Uh, you could shut off or on the lock sound, uh, you know, the Apple Pay sound. You can use the tick animation, shine animation. You can make them go faster. You could even change the colors, or you can even um, have it vibrate or shake fingerprint when it's failed. So there's a lot of things. Um, that you can do with this and more and more every now and then it's getting updated and it's adding some really cool features. It's gotta be one of my favorites. So the next tweak is virtual home. This is probably the one that I'm using the most. Basically what virtual home does is it uses the touch ID sensor um, in your iPhone 5S or later or uh, newest iPads, iPad Air 2 or iPad Mini 3 and you just simply touch the sensor versus uh, actually pressing it in uh, to navigate your device. So if I double tap it you can hear it vibrate a little bit and it'll bring up the app switcher and if I just tap once it'll bring me back to the home screen let's say for example I go into settings 
tap once and it takes me um, right back to the home screen. Um, so this pretty much informs you first of all that the Touch ID sensor uh, has full capabilities of being a capacitive home button whereas you do not know you no longer need to press down the actual button um, to activate it. You just simply touch uh, kind of like you would when you put your finger over um, to read it on the fingerprint scanner or when you double uh, ta double touch uh, the fingerprint sensor to activate reachability on the iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus. Um, that replaces it in this case and you can use it um, as a regular home button. You can hold it down for Siri if you want. You can pretty much do whatever with it. Next up is Tiny Bar. Now this has always been one of my favorite tweaks. If you've been watching my jailbreak videos for a few years, you'll know what I mean. So basically this is what notifications coming in look like when Tiny Bar is off. And when you enable them, you can see it only takes up the spot of the status bar. And you can see I have scrolling text enabled so it fully reads the notification. And so basically it's not so notifications are so interruptive and loud. They just take up where the status bar is. It doesn't fill up that whole portion of the screen right there, which has always been annoying to me. Um, you can just see what it does. It's it's really cool. I've been using it for quite some time now. And in previous years, uh, I think it was called Diet Bulletin before iOS 7. This is the same exact thing. If you know what Diet Bulletin is, you automatically know what Tiny Bar is. It's a really cool little useful tweak. The next one up is slide to kill eight. Now this one is extremely simple. As you know, uh, regularly in the app switcher, you can swipe up on an app to kill it. Um, but with slide to kill eight, and you'd have to do that individually, of course, with slide to kill eight, you simply swipe down and it kills all of your apps and takes you back to the home screen automatically. This is a very small tweak, but I thought it was really cool and really useful too. Another little tweak I really like for iOS 8 is called pull to respring. Basically, I just go back here um, to my settings page and all I do is pull up and you can see there's a little loading screen. When you pull it the whole way, the device resprings. Now, I use a lot of tweaks that require respringing that don't have respring settings um, in their settings preference pane, so they work behind the scenes without any panes. Um, and so this is really nice to have if I need a quick respring or a quick restart or something like that. Uh, it really comes in handy. So this next one is pretty useful. It's called swipe selection. I can't remember if I showed this in the past or not um, but basically what you do is let's say you're typing and you know typically if you make an error you have to hold down use the magnifying glass and go back and fix something well with swipe selection it gets even easier and you simply swipe across the keyboard to move where you want to to be honest with you I don't know why Apple hasn't included a feature like this yet it is extremely useful and extremely convenient um, and I've seen myself using it a lot more first you might not think you're going to um, but in recent weeks I've been using it so so much because it's just so much easier I can simply go back and you know fix something or add something if I want go back and type whatever I don't know I can't focus I can't type and talk differently at the same time um, but I guess you know what I'm saying so this next week that I want to show you guys is called Eclipse 2 now for those of you that have been watching me in the past you probably remember I did a video on Eclipse the original version uh, last year for iOS 7 Basically what this does is it completely blacks out the entire iOS. So if you hate that eye blinding uh, from white that can get very irritating and annoying, um, you will love Eclipse too, which basically um, makes your entire UI uh, darker than what you typically have. If I hop into messages here, you can see exactly what I mean, just how nice and uh, dark it gets. There's no more blinding. The black keyboard is always defaulted um, pretty much all around the entire iOS. Any app you uh, walk into is completely blacked out. Looks a lot better in my opinion. Here's notes for example. These are all the tweaks that I'm showcasing. You can see how it inverts the colors almost and it just looks a lot better. And it's not just Apple apps this works for. This also works for third-party apps. For example, right here you can see I'm on my Instagram. You can see how it blacks it out. It uh, works in a bunch of other apps too. And you can even blacklist some apps if you want. For example, Tweetbot. I use Tweetbot's dark mode, which they have provided automatically without jailbreaking. So I have Tweetbot blacklisted in settings um, so that it will avoid uh, actually turning on uh, their own Eclipse 2's own dark mode, which is a really, really useful feature since I prefer Tweetbot's version, if you know what I mean. But it's a really cool tweak. I definitely re recommend checking out. I think it's like a dollar. Um, if, if it's something you want, if you want a darker UI, then Eclipse 2 is for you. All right, the next tweak I want to show you guys is called Flux, which is actually stylized F.LUX, uh, but everyone calls it Flux. Now, I have actually never used this tweak before up until now, so this is a new one. Um, and so basically what this does is it takes your screen and at sunset, or whenever time you want for that matter, and at sunrise, it changes the warmth and color of the screen. Um, so at first, I really didn't like how this tweak looked. I thought my screen looked disgusting, but then I realized how much I appreciate it and like the tweak. So right here, I'll go into Flux's um, actual settings preference pane. And even though um, right where I am in my time, uh, it's not sunset yet, I'm going to give you a little preview of what it does. So I'll hit preview. 
And as you can see, the screen uh, all of a sudden dims. And it almost kind of looks like what you'd see in an Apple commercial. As you probably know, the screens aren't fully white. Um, you, they're tinted a little bit to make them look more real. Um, and at nighttime, this is really useful so that the white is not blinding you. That's the standard white that's on right now. And as I dip down to preview, that's what it'll look like after the sun sets. And when the sun rises, it goes back to normal color. This is really useful at night um, and day for that matter as well when it changes back. It doesn't burn your eyes out that much and it just gives you a better uh, presentation on your screen. Um, so I can't provide a full example right now. Uh, as you know, it's it's not sunset yet. It's 127 in the afternoon. Um, but when this is running and it is on, uh, it really makes a huge difference. I definitely recommend uh, going to install it. It's a free tweak in Cydia. Go grab it. Next tweak I'm going to show you is Barrel. Now, if you don't know what Barrel is, you are living under a rock. No, just kidding. Um, but seriously, you should know what Barrel is. This is a very simple tweak. This is one that I show off in every single one of my videos. And I guess it's just because it's an old time favorite and just about everyone, including myself, absolutely adores this tweak. All it does is add these really cool um, animations to when you swipe between um, your pages. This is one of the original jailbreak tweaks that everyone was wowed by when it came out. And I guess people are still wowed at the fact that um, um, it still works perfectly without any issues. Um, there's a whole ton of effects that you can add to it. My personal favorite is Curl and Roll Away. I've been using that one for, God, I don't know how long. It's personally one of my favorites. It's a really cool tweak um, that adds some character to when you're swiping your pages, and it's just not that boring back and forth thing. So go check it out. All right, and so just about the last tweak that I'm going to be showing you here is called No Icon Labels, and this is very simple and straightforward. I know, it's a small one. Basically, all this does is it gets rid of the icon labels um, on your home screen. Now, this is something that you you could do with Spring to Mice. However, I've been using Spring to Mice for a few weeks to uh, resize my icons, give them a cover flow effect. But I realized that Spring to Mice 3 has been crashing the absolute crap out of my device while draining the battery at the same time. So I stopped using that and looked for an alternative. And that's when I found no icon labels. Now this is strictly for iOS 8. So as you can see, it gives a really nice look um, to the icons on your home screen. Now this also goes for in the app switcher. And that's why uh, when I had apps open, you didn't see any labels under. And that's why also I have the contacts disabled in the top. And that's why you don't see it saying any no recent contacts for any of you thought that this was iOS 7 or something. Maybe I was tricking you. I just have it all disabled and that text doesn't appear anymore um, for that reason. It's also disabled um, in folders, the app switcher, uh, you get the picture. It disables them. I always hated icon labels just because I know what apps I'm using. They're pretty obvious. Um, and especially since I use a custom font, uh, it also looks a lot uglier on the home screen. So I'm, I'm happy that I got this tweak, but go check it out. It's a free tweak, no icon labels. Go grab it if you want. Now I did say that that was my last tweak that I was gonna showcase. There's a few more things I wanted to go over. I wanna let everybody know that uh, one tweak that I always use that I just couldn't get working for this video um, is IntelliScreen X and uh, the people over at Intelliborn um, actually just released ISX8, IntelliScreen X8 as well as Messages Plus 8. Um, and you guys already know what that is. I've done so many videos on that tweak before. Basically, you swipe down and you have a beautiful view of all of your notifications. It's much more simplified. You have weather, um, your most recent notifications. You can view different feeds and different tabs. Uh, messages Plus is basically like a whole quick reply system in itself without ever entering the Messages app. Um, for this video, however, even though I've purchased the tweak multiple times and Inteleborn is reluctant to supporting me, uh, very unfortunately, I don't know if you guys have seen my tweets to them, I have not been able to get uh, IntelliScreen X8 working on my device. The trial works for three days, then I bought it, and it will not install itself. It still thinks um, that it's running a trial. So with that said, I cannot show you the tweak, um, but you guys pretty much know what it is. If you wanna see it, I'll leave a link in the description. Um, I reviewed it last year for iOS 7, and it's pretty much the same, almost exactly the same. Uh, I reviewed the tweak separately because I loved it so much, um, so I'll leave a link in the description so you can go check it out. I just don't have it for this video. And then to close it out, the question I get all the time is how do you get the shoe logo in the top and how do you get your text the way it is? We'll go over the text first. I'm using Font 2, which is a very popular font app. It's actually the only one, what am I saying? And I use the Complete In Him font, people are always wondering. I've been using this Complete In Him font for the last almost three years now. Um, it's one of my favorites. I don't know how I stumbled upon it. I was just looking for fonts one day and I found it. It's kind of like a handwritten type of thing. It looks pretty cool. So that's the one I'm using. Go grab it. But you have to get Bite of Font 2 and the most recent version of Complete in Him. So make sure you do that. Um, 
And probably the question I get the most, I get this on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, email, I get it on every freaking uh, social platform you can imagine, is how do I get that logo um, in the top left? Now, everybody knows, uh, I'm sure at this point, that you have to use the Tweak Zeppelin um, to change how your carrier looks, whether it's icons or carrier text. But everyone wants to know how I get the Dornbecker 4 logo. As you know, I'm a, I'm a shoe collector or sneaker collector, whatever you want to call it, not close enough terms for you guys. Um, but everyone always asks, I guess, I guess there's some DB4 fans out there. Everyone always asks um, how I get the DB4 icon up there. So this is a private source that my friend did. He, he's sauce underscore movement on Twitter. I told you guys this uh, multiple times, but I never really gave you the source. And this finally is the source. He has a few things in there. Um, one you're going to want to install is Air Jordan's IV, which stands for four. D is in Dornbecker for Zeppelin. Okay, you're going to want to install that package. You need his source first. His source is Cydia dot my repo space dot com slash sauce movement and I will leave that in the description for any of you that missed it and then you'll go into that source like I said go to all packages you're going to install Air Jordan's 4D for Zeppelin as in Air Jordan Dornbecker 4 and then you will be able to go ahead and go into Zeppelin of course make sure you have Zeppelin installed first you'll be able to go in there and actually um, get the Dornbecker 4 logo in the top on the left where your carrier is just like me finally that question is answered but that's it for this video guys. I know it was a little bit long I really wanted to show you everything that I'm using on my iDevice right now while it is jailbroken The jailbreak isn't gonna be around for long I feel like because as you know Apple is going to be releasing their Apple watch soon um, And with that we're all gonna need to upgrade our devices pretty soon um, To I'm assuming iOS 8.2 to actually be able to use our Apple watches with our iDevices So I wanted to get this video up as soon as possible. That's why it's up like the first week of January in 2015 um, for you guys so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to leave some comments below on your thoughts. Of course, rate this video a thumbs up and click the subscribe button below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.